Today, I'm going to try to learn how to chop things real fast without accidentally lopping off some fingers. I've got some basic knife skills, so I'm giving myself 30 minutes to learn. Hopefully, we don't end up in the ER tonight. So the first thing we need to do is relocate this absurd pile of zucchini. I'm pretty sure I bought like half of Aldi's inventory and freaked out the only clerk on duty today. Next, I decide to quarter my zucchini. That is cutting it in half and then cutting it in half again. The main reason for this is that I've only bought 10 zucchinis and there's no way in hell I'm going back to buy more from that same clerk. I already look weird enough, not doing it again, even for YouTube. I figure I can either get double practice by cutting the zucchini in half, or four times the practice by cutting it into quarters. Biggest problem with this approach is that my knife skills are apparently ass, and these zucchini quarters are harder to balance than I thought. Now I'm one zucchini down. My cuts are slow and imprecise, and I keep on getting these accordion pieces where I haven't cut all the way through. Some of these cuts are paper thin and the other ones are thick as hell, and I'm getting a little bit discouraged. So that's when I decide to get some help from this guy. Been binging a lot of Huberman lab clips lately on YouTube. And one of the things that he recommends for accelerated learning is that you actually take breaks. Completely stop what you're doing, close your eyes, sit or lay down. In theory, while you're doing nothing, your brain is actually rehearsing the last thing that you practiced only at 20 times speed. And so while I don't know exactly what's going on inside of my own head right now, I'm going to go ahead and assume that it looks a little something like this. This is probably as good a time as any to start explaining about knife technique. We're going to be using something called the claw. Basically, you're curling your fingers so you don't chop off a fingertip. After that, you're running the knife up and down the face of some of your fingers, or one of your fingers, and using that to guide the blade. The problem is that sometimes you end up with some of this bullshit, where pieces of whatever it is that you're cutting just start falling off wherever they want, getting in the way. One of the things that I learned while doing this challenge was that you can sidestep this issue by just doing a straight up and down chop rather than a back to front diagonal chop. I decide the zucchini quarters are too jimbly jambly for me to continue to work with, so from here on out, it's only going to be half zucchinis. But that means I only get half as much knife practice, which is going to be kind of a problem. If you're like me, then one of the major problems of trying to acquire any new skill is that at a certain point, you begin to hyper obsess about what it is that you do wrong. And this was no exception for me. Between the limited amount of time, the fact that I just couldn't see past all the areas where I was slow or making mistakes, it was easy to get bogged down in this idea that I simply wasn't good enough to actually complete this challenge. And it was hard to deny with all this evidence in front of me. And it was starting to feel like another one of those videos where I'd attempt to do it, fail horribly, and then just keep the results to myself. If there's one thing that I have learned, it's that these are thoughts informed by emotions, and those emotions can be addressed and resolved. Once they are, it's simply a matter of following the plan, sticking with the system, allowing things to unfold the way that they were meant to unfold. And at a certain point in this process, that's kind of hard to explain, I kind of just surrendered trying to control the way that the knife is chopping. And the results? Well, you can see for yourself. So now we're at the end of this challenge and we've managed to achieve some level of speed chopping. But is it enough? How does this actually measure up against the original clip that we started with? Only one way to find out. Here is the moment of truth. So in the end, it seems like we have a little bit of catching up to do. Jon Favreau is a little bit faster than us. And for now, I'm okay with that. If you're wondering what happened to the zucchini, I now have five bags of it, and it's starting to look like I'm going to have squash for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the coming week. As always, if you got something out of this video, be sure to leave it a like or a subscribe. While the actual skill gain was only about half an hour, the editing was four or five, and if you stick around for a little bit, 
you'll get to see some B-roll that I was going to stick in earlier to spice up this video. I'm warning you now, it doesn't make any sense at all. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you. Peace. Welcome to a world where ordinary becomes extraordinary. Imagine a zucchini suspended in time, its fall slowed to a mesmerizing crawl. Suddenly a flash of steel. Knives, sharp as a hawk's gaze, slice through the air, transforming the humble vegetable into a cascade of emerald green discs. But that's not all. Flames leap and dance, an inferno that sears and chars, adding a smoky kiss to the freshly cut zucchini. The heat is intense, a testament to the passion that goes into every slice, every sear, every char. This is not just a zucchini, this is a testament to the power of transformation. Experience the thrill, the drama, the artistry. Welcome to the spectacle of the extraordinary every day. Welcome to our world. Told you it was weird. Subscribe. <laughs> <laughs>